So um, I just want to show you something really quick. Let me position freeze this here for a moment. I'm going to deselect the approach mode. So now we're back in just heading and altitude hold. Okay, take a look here at the autopilots on the top right. If I hit Command B, it transfers to the B side and it disconnects A. In other words, I can't have two autopilots on at the same time. It won't allow it mm -hmm. unless, I'm going to go back to A, you hit the approach mode first. If I arm the approach like I just did, and I see single channel, Borlo, glide slip arm like that, now I can connect the second autopilot, and it'll retain both autopilots. And you need both of them for a Cat 2 or Cat 3, correct? Yes. So you need both for Cat 2 and 3, 100%. You only need one for a Cat 1. There are some places that do not mandate putting on the second autopilot because they're not cat three approved so then they just say just put leave the one autopilot don't worry about the second one i am very much going to tell you just my opinion i would always put on the second autopilot i would go approach mode second autopilot always and the reason that i would do that is because if you don't put the second autopilot and you hit toga to go around, the one autopilot that you had connected will disconnect. The TOGA selection disconnects the autopilot if you have only one autopilot connected. If I have two autopilots connected and I push TOGA, it retains both autopilots and the airplane will fly the go around for me and I will not have to fly it, hand-flown. So, I do advocate for that. And there's nothing wrong with it either, because in the QRH, which is behind me here, there's a um, section titled Perform uh, Maneuvers, Flight Patterns, ILS Approach. QRH, Maneuvers, Flight Patterns, ILS Approach. And it does specifically say that when I'm cleared for the approach, second autopilot command, dual autopilot. I can put the second one on. It has a note, dual autopilot available during two-engine approach only. That's fine. We're doing a two-engine approach. So this goes back to what Miguel said earlier. Can it, can it do an auto go around single engine? No, because in order to do an auto go around, I need two autopilots. And in order to use two autopilots, I need two engines. And so if I'm single engine, it won't do it. So you're going to have to hand fly the single engine ILS. However, fortunately, we're normally doing normal two engine operations. And I would say put on the second autopilot always, in my opinion, because it works better, lasts a long time, it's less workload, it is reliable, and it's backed up by the QRH. There's no reason not to put two on, in my opinion. I mean, and the reason it automatically, yeah, and the reason it, reason it automatically will do the go around is because that's programmed into the CDU, uh, and it, it LNAV and VNAV will take it from there. Is that correct? Okay, so, uh, uh, something like LNAV and VNAV will very much take it. Um, you have uh, what is referred to as auto acceleration, which we're going to see. Auto acceleration, it's not its not exactly LNAV, VNAV, because you'll see the modes LNAV, VNAV are not engaged, but it's comparable to it in that it will accelerate you automatically the same way VNAV would. Uh, and as far as lateral guidance, it'll just track runway heading until you put something else in there for it to track. So it's not uh, exactly that, but it's pretty comparable to that. Got it. Yeah. Um, okay, so we put so I got the second autopilot on. That's how I would advise flying this. And um, what I want you to, to see is that despite the fact that there's now two autopilots, it still says single channel, even though we technically have dual channel. So the single channel is going to stay there until the self-test. 
which we learned about yesterday. Okay. The self-test happens at 1,500 feet. There's Vorlo capture. Heading to course is the call. So I'm going to take my heading bug on the MCP that you can see, and I'm going to rotate it to the inbound course. Airplane's turning to capture the localizer now. And the next thing I'm looking for is glide slope alive. And when we see glide slope alive, I'm going to say gear down flaps 15. At that point, I will also arm the speed brake and we'll put the start switches to continuous. I'll explain that in a minute. And then we're going to reduce the speed to the flap 15 speed. So to recap that, glide slope alive, gear down, flaps 15, speed 15, arm the speed brake, igniters continuous. Where do you see that? How do you know to do all these things? That is in the QRH, in the flight patterns section, Glide slope alive, gear down, flat 15, arm speed brake. That's where you see that. This one doesn't say start switch is continuous because the QRH, remember, is airplane specific. And this one is actually for an airplane that has auto ignition. So the igniters automatically activate with engine rollback. So you don't have to put the continuous there. Uh, so, and let me talk about that here for a second. I'm going to accelerate this just a bit to get glide slope alive. There we go. Okay. Flight frozen. The glide slope's alive. The diamond has filled in magenta. This is where we would call gear down flaps 15. In the 320, the ignition or the igniters fire continuously when the flaps are extended. Why is it important to have ignition continuously? Because we're low to the ground and we're coming into a critical phase of flight. There's two of the two times here. Take off and go around. We're low to the ground, critical phase of flight. The engine is protecting itself because the engine, honestly, a jet engine, think of a jet engine like a barbecue, a propane barbecue. A propane barbecue, you turn on the gas, you light it once, the flame propagates, meaning it continues to burn, and you don't have to keep lighting it over and over and over again. Once it's burning, it's burning. So this is a jet engine. A jet engine is like this. We have air, we have gas, the igniter lights it, and then it ignites, and then the igniter is no longer needed because it just continuously burns. The problem is if you open up the grill and take a bucket of water and dump it on it, you're going to turn, you're going to extinguish the flame. <laughs> Now, if you go try to ignite it again, as long as the gas is still on and you put the lighter to it, it's probably going to turn back on again. So when we're taking off and we're landing, we have the igniters on firing continuously. Even though they don't need to be, we always have them on firing continuously in case our barbecue flames out it can relight itself automatically because it has ignition firing all the time. In the 320, when you put the flaps out, the airplane says flaps are out. The only time they go out is for landing. They must be landing ignition continuous to protect the engines and it does it for you. In the Boeing, it's manual and it doesn't do that, which is why now at Glide Slope Alive, gear down, flaps 15, we have to put the start switches to continuous, meaning continuous ignition to protect our engines. Does that make sense? Okay, toga is on either your pointer, your middle or your pointer finger. There's two buttons there. You can push either one. Mm -hmm. The auto throttle disconnect is on your thumb and your pinky. Do not confuse the auto throttle disconnect for toga. This is a big problem for pilots coming from the Gulf Stream. Apparently, the Gulfstream has toga on the side. So every pilot I've trained from a Gulfstream transitioning to the 
they go around and they hit the auto throttle disconnect. They pitch up to go around. And now they have disconnected the auto throttle without go around thrust and they pitch up and the airspeed bleeds off. This is the button. On the approach, be ready to go around. Just expect that you're going to go around every approach. That's the way you approach. I'm going around. <clears throat> every single approach. This is going to be a go around. I just stick that expectation in my head. If you get all the way down to the runway at flare height, and I can't figure out any reason to go around, then I'm just going to be like, okay, I guess I'll just flare then and land. But the mindset is very much go around, and I have the call outs in the tip of my tongue. Go around flat 15, I'm just ready for it.